What is going on guys? Hope you're doing awesome. Uh, things are pretty good on this side. So uh, welcome to this video in official part three of our object detection uh, series. And in this video, we wanna learn how we can clean up bounding box predictions. So uh, we might have multiple bounding boxes for one object and the method or the technique to, to clean up these bounding boxes is through non-max suppression. So I'm gonna first try to uh, explain what that method is about and then in the, uh, in the second part of this video, we're gonna implement that in PyTorch. All right, so as mentioned, our goal is to clean up bounding boxes. And uh, more specifically, we, we have an image with an object, in this case, with a car in it. And uh, from our model, we're gonna get some bounding box predictions for that object. And as you can see, you, you know, you, we have multiple bounding boxes uh, in many cases, and we want to have a method of cleaning these up. So that after doing this method, this non-max suppression method uh, that I'm gonna talk about in just a brief moment, uh, we want to have one bounding box prediction at the end. So let's just say that from our model, we're gonna get uh, three bounding boxes for, for this object, and each of them have uh, a probability score associated with that box. And so this probability is between zero and one, indicating how likely it is that that bounding box corresponds or th that there is an object in that bounding box. And how we then uh, use this non-max suppression is that we take out the the highest scoring box. And that means that we, we, we choose this box. So we, we have now taken this box. And then we take uh, the, we compare this box with the other boxes. So let's say we, we compare it with the 0.6 probability box, and we calculate the IOU between those two boxes, which we learned how to do in the last video. So let's just say that this IOU score turns out to be 0.51. And how non-max suppression works is that if the IOU between those two objects is higher than some threshold, and let's just say that that threshold is 0.5, all right? So this IOU equals 0.51 is higher than this 0.5 threshold. Then that means that we're, go we're going to remove that box uh, entirely from our prediction. So now we're only left with two bounding boxes. And as you can probably guess, we're gonna do the exact same thing between those two bounding boxes, meaning we're gonna calculate the IOU between those. And let's just say that the IOU in this case is 0.6, which is also higher than our um, then our threshold, which was 0.5. This IOU threshold is a hyperparameter of our model, so you, you can uh, you can decide what to set this as, but I'm just taking 0.5 as an example. So then we'll also remove that bounding box, and we're all all we're left with is this single bounding box prediction, which is the, um, the you know, hopefully the perfect bounding box for this object. But so what if we have multiple uh, classes, so, you know, um, let's say we have one car object and then we have an, a horse in this case. Uh, what we do then is that we do non-max suppression separate for each class. So uh, we need to be, you know, the, the non-max suppression uh, needs to be for each class independently. Uh, and that means that, you know, we can't compare bounding boxes and compare IUUs, but, uh, you know, across classes, because that wouldn't really make sense. So to conclude sort of the non-max suppression algorithm is that perhaps, uh, first of all, before we do anything related to non-max suppression is that perhaps we discard some bounding boxes uh, less than some probability threshold. So let's say that, you know, if the they model predicts that there's a 1% probability of being an object, maybe we don't even consider looking at those. So maybe we'll pick some probability threshold, uh, let's say 0.2 or something like that. And then what we'll do is we'll do while we have bounding boxes, we'll take out the largest probability box from, from our bounding boxes and we'll remove all the other boxes with a IOU uh, greater than some threshold. And then uh, we need to remember that we do this for each class separately. All right, so that was kind of an overview of non-max suppression and how it works. And I think the details are gonna become much clearer when we actually implement that. So uh, let's move over and try to implement this in PyTorch. 
All right, so what we kind of have to do first of all is import torch, and then we're gonna define a non -ma wait non max suppression, and we're gonna send in some some predictions. We're gonna send in some IOU threshold, uh, and we're gonna send in some um, box format, and this is from from our implementation of intersection over union, uh, and. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna set this to just corners because depending on the box format, maybe you have, uh, as in the data set for YOLO, you're gonna have the midpoint for the bounding box and then the height and the width. Uh, but uh, you can also have the, the top left corner and the bottom right corner. So that depends on the box format. Um, all right, so then uh, what we're gonna do, or rather what we're gonna, all right, so what we're gonna get for our predictions is a list. So the predictions is going to be a list and inside this list, we're going to have our bounding box uh, predictions. So let's say we have, you know, in this case, we have three bounding boxes. Then we're going to have six elements in each list. So the first is going to be the class that it corresponds to. So let's say it's class one. Maybe that is a car. And then the second is the probability, probability of that bounding box. So let's say 0.9. And then we have, you know, the uh, x1, y1, x2, y2. All right, so that's what we have for all of these um, uh, these uh, bounding boxes. So let's just say we have one example in that case, one bounding box. Uh, so that's how they are structured. Um, that's what I'm assuming the structure is. So maybe we can, you know, assert first of all is that the type of bounding boxes is equal to a list, uh, and then uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do bounding boxes equals box for box in bounding boxes if the box one is going to be greater than some threshold all right so we're going to add that as well uh, we're going to have an iou threshold for the intersection of a union but we're also going to have some let's call it probability threshold so we're going to have some probability threshold as well so if it's greater than some probability threshold then uh, so we're only going to keep the ones that are higher than some probability threshold uh, then we're going to do boxes, uh, bounding boxes, after non-max suppression. So we're going to store that in the list. One other thing that we can add is we can do bounding boxes is uh, sorted of bounding boxes. And we're going to do key equals lambda x, x of 1, and then reverse equals true. So what we're doing here is that we're sorting the bounding boxes with the highest probability at the beginning. Um, so that's important because we want to choose the box, first of all, with the highest probability. probability. All right, so let's move that to this spot. All right, so what we're going to do then is while we have bounding boxes, all right, so while there are still bounding boxes uh, in this uh, list, we're going to choose one box. So cho chosen box is uh, bounding boxes dot pop of, of zero. So we're going to choose the one with the highest score, right? So what we want to do now is we want to compare this chosen box to the other boxes and see if, uh, first of all, if the IOU is greater than some threshold, then we want to actually uh, remove them. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to do bounding boxes. I'm going to do list comprehension. So I'm going to do um, box for box in boxes. And what we're going to do first is we're going to do if box of zero, so the class of this box we're looking at, is not equal to the chosen box class, right? If it's not of the same class, we don't want to compare them, right? So if, if they are not of the same class, then right, right, you know, just out of that condition, we want to keep that bounding box. Uh, or if the intersection over, over union, so we're gonna have to import that implementation, we're gonna do torch.tensor of chosen box and we're going to do two and forward. So what this means is we're going to we're going to remove the first elements, right? These two right there, and those two corresponds to the class and the probability score. So we just want to calculate the intersection of union uh, with the with the four locations for that bounding box. All right, and then we want to do torch.tensor of that box, and we want to also take two and and forward. And then uh, what we want to do is we also want to send in the box format. So let's say the box format equals box format. That's an input to this function. And then 
uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna close that. Uh, and if that thing right there is less than some IOU threshold, right? Then we're gonna close it. So that's um, pretty much what we're gonna get, right? So this is, um, I guess, pretty long box uh, list comprehension. But here we're first comparing: are they of the same? Are they of different classes? Then we want to, you know, keep it. If, if they are not, if they're of the same class, we want to compare those two objects. And if the IOU is less than some threshold, then we want to keep that box. Uh, and then we want to do bounding boxes after non-max suppression. We want to append this chosen box. All right. So all we're doing in this right here is we're updating the list of bounding boxes. Uh, and then at the end, we're appending to this bounding boxes after non-max suppression. Uh, and then, you know, at the end, we want to just return a bounding boxes after non-max suppression. All right, so one thing that is important, make sure that we have this IOU implementation uh, from last time. And then uh, we're going to do at the top here, we're going to do from IOU import intersection over, over union. All right, so I realized that for the, the test cases I've done uh, to test this function, uh, we actually uh, need to change some stuff. So we can't call this, or we can, but my test needs to be changed then. So we're going to change this to NMS, just uh, for non-max suppression. And then we're going to send in some bounding boxes rather than, we're going to call them bounding boxes instead of predictions. And then we're going to here is, uh, assert a type of bounding boxes is equal to list. And also this uh, probability threshold we're just gonna call threshold, and then uh, we're gonna see that this is greater than some threshold rather than uh, probability threshold. Uh, and then here we need to do for boxing uh, bounding boxes instead of uh, boxes, just because we don't have anything called uh, just boxes. And yeah, that should be it. So let's, uh, let's just write that file, and then we can run our tests. And uh, in this case, they're just four tests, so maybe we can add more additional tests later on but at least this serves as a, as a sanity check that everything is implemented correctly. And uh, I've also tested this visually on, on several examples to see that it should work. But yeah, so that was it for this video. Hopefully you were able to follow this non-max suppression implementation. Uh, I'm sure there are different um, you know, ways to make this more efficient and I'd love to, to hear your thoughts on how we can make this uh, you know, more efficient and, and cleaner code. Since non-max suppression is usually done as, as a sort of a secondary step after our prediction from our model, it's not super important that this is actually, you know, ultra efficient uh, compared to, you know, our computation in our model. But um, it's still, you know, nice to have clean and efficient code. So please do share your, your feedback and, and thoughts on how we can improve this. All right, so that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.